What's up, everybody? Man, we're not here giving tips. Tips to grow. You can only grow if you're not injured, right? So if you're injured, then that's a problem. So the best thing, even though nobody ever does this, is to be proactive. So I'm going to run you through these five simple tricks. That one weird trick, not five litmus tests, so to speak, where you can see if you are on the verge of an injury. Number one. If you cannot do this properly, like to some extent, your shoulders are too tight, okay? If that's you, if you're like stuck here or so, you have to start doing this, meaning the pull aparts. You also need to do plenty of face pulls at each workout, as well as J pulls. Um, and then also something that I call the uh, reverse shrug to work on the lower trapezius, mid trapezius, where you simply pinch the shoulder blades downward to get that development. So basically, if you cannot rotate, ugh, I almost fell here, rotate your shoulders, that means you are you're like this, you're quasi-modo, and your cuff, front delt, and bicep tendon are about to go. Um, next thing. Rotation. If you cannot properly rotate a weight that is equivalent of about 8% to your bench press, your cuffs are weak and they're about to go. Meaning you need to do what I told you already, plus train your cuffs. The cuff is being trained at the cable, not with the dumbbell standing. When you tell me the dumbbell standing, the force goes down. So outward rotations, inward, and then also what Poliquin did quite well, the rotation. If you have the shoulder horn, I'm using the ghetto version. Then there is what I call the, the push-pull test. So if your bent over row is not equal to your bench press, um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, your back is way, way, way too weak, which means you need a lot of uh, pull variations. So what can be done is, this is a very wide grip like we have seen. Um, I just love my new grips. I'm showing them off, that's all. Um, so uh, something like this can actually be used in a variety of things. So the idea is always to keep the hand to go out so if you only have a straight bar you have to mimic it by pushing the elbows so you can do this to do pulling the bar apart you can go straight down you can go two for one where both arms pull down but only one goes up and this can be done sort of a not uh, sorry standing 45 degrees for the stretch or the ultimate would be the kneeling but you really cannot cheat whatsoever so you would need to do that pretty much every workout until there's balance um, overhead squat so if you are being taped from the side or from the front and you cannot squat down without doing this that means your glutes are weak, the leads are weak, you are weak. You know, remember this? Glenger and Ross, never mind. So, if that is the case, you need lots of unilateral work. Step ups, which by the way are not hop ups, so you step, the front foot pulls you up. Okay? Lunges, they can be done as, I like cable lunges. So, stepping back or stationary being upright would be more quads for be more on the glute or the sif lunge so we need to do all that until there's balance in general when it comes to legs we're all quad dominant so i recommend you do leg curls twice a week three times a week and do them first in the leg workout because I know about you but if I do my single leg work or single joint sorry after my <coughs> squats leg press it's an afterthought I'm like eh 
and tired. Plus, you're doing the leg curls first will activate the hamstrings and give you a much better squat workout. So, if you can't rotate, pull apart. If this is weak, calf work. If your chest overpowering your back, pull downs. If you can't do an overhead squat, single leg work. Be healthy, be safe, get huge. Mike out.